Hey guys, Neomas here. So for today's video, I'm going to be looking at the best Arsenal Academy players that Arsenal could look at bringing from the Academy into the first team, as well as my analysis are around them. Stay tuned. So over the past few weeks uh, on the comments, I've been always asking with a lot of my videos, guys, leave your comments on what you actually think on what's going on. And some of the suggestions that I got from one of the uh, commenters was they would actually like me to do a talk and do a discussion on some of the young academy players coming through. What does everybody really think about them? And I thought now is a perfect opportunity to really do that. Obviously, everyone knows that yesterday it was official that Freddie Lundberg is going to be part of the Arsenal setup for the first team. And this is a great opportunity for these young players. Now, for this video, I'm going to be focusing on the players that I genuinely think are going to get a chance. Not in terms of who might be the most talented players, but who I actually think Arsenal would actually play within their first team. So... I know you guys are going to come with me with criticisms, but that's what this video is, is about. So I firstly wanted to get started with my number one prospect, and I always pick this guy up all day long, Reese Nelson. Now, Reese Nelson is a fantastic Arsenal winger, plays primarily out there on the, on the right wing. Last this past season, he played out at Hoffenheim and to be honest, had a, a pretty good season. Not fantastic, um, I think he started the season really, really well and a, a lot of people was comparing his form at that time to the likes of Jadon Sancho, but unfortunately he got a bit of an injury and then it took him a little while to get back into the first team. And then I think that uh, there was some issues in regards to uh, being dropped from the team due to some disciplinary issues. And even though Reese came out and said, you know what, it's not a big deal, he's a bit late coming to training, so they punished him for it. I feel that the long period that he has had at Hoffenheim has vastly developed him to be a top player, one. Uh, and two, I think this loan at Hoffenheim um, has helped him to develop and mature as a man, which is the biggest thing that you really want. He's now gonna be coming back into the Arsenal setup where he's gonna be one year more mature. He's had one one year where he's played what I call big grown man's football. And that's what you want, because that's something that a lot of those academy players are not going to get. So here's what, you know, Reese Nelson, you know, did last season. I mean, this is a guy that scored seven goals last season, got one assist out of 29 games. And I know he played a couple of more games um, in the Premier League League 2 before he was loaned out to Hoffenheim. But to score seven goals, one assist across 29 games, I mean, it's, I, I think that's really good. Um, I, I think that, you know, at Arsenal this coming season, he's probably going to be playing closer to about 40 to 45 games for Arsenal. Uh, coming up off the bench, I think will probably be most likely his position to be within this Arsenal setup. I think with Arsenal looking for more the experienced wingers, we've seen the rumours of Yannick Carrasco, the likes of Ryan Frazier. It just seems that you can see Reese Nelson being one of those guys, almost like a super sub to come up off the bench, give us that injection for between 30 to 45 minutes, depending on when he's kind of first substitute on. We obviously know just with how Arsenal and Unai Emery kind of really do things in their rotation, that he's going to get games within the Europa League, especially within the group stages. You know, he's going to get games in the FA Cup and in the League Cup as well, which are going to be games that is really needed for a young player like Reese Nelson and I'm so looking forward to seeing Reese Nelson play for Arsenal Football Club. He's one of my favourite young players at the club and I cannot wait to see this guy do absolute bits um, for, for the Arsenal. Also another thing with uh, Reese Nelson, the fact that he can play in multiple positions and what a lot of people don't realize, he can also play as an attacking midfield player as well. Now I think depending on what happens with a lot of player sales will be depending on the primary, like how much games that he gets and where he will be playing. So I think 
the key thing is, I, I, I'm sure I'm going to go into later videos about this as the transfer window goes on, the whole Meza Ozil, Mkhitaryan um, drama that, that needs to be addressed. No one really plays with attacking midfield players anymore. Reese Nelson could play in that position deeper in the hole. A lot of the goals that Reese Nelson played uh, for Hoffenheim last season, he was driving in the box and scoring goals. Um, and you can take a look at some of the goals that he scored on YouTube. There's plenty of channels showing kind of goals that he scored. Like Reese Nelson is an absolute boss when it comes to scoring goals. He's a goal scoring winger. Now, the one thing that he has to improve is, is to improve his ability to be able to create chances for other teammates. And that's something that I do worry about in the Arsenal setup. And I think is the reason why he's viewed as someone to be coming up off the bench. And that's primarily because you need, especially from the first minute, you want somebody to be able to create chances, particularly for our strikers. You know, our Aubameyang and Lacazette are the best and we need someone that can help create chances for them. Now, I know people create chances for Reese when he was at Hoffenheim, when he was at, out there. I believe it's the left back by the name of, um, last name, Schul, um, Schulz, um, who helped um, create a lot of chances for him. But let's see what Reese could do. I'm looking forward to it. And so second on the list is Eddie Inketia. Now, Eddie Inketia is a young English striker, obviously currently at, in the Arsenal Academy has not played that many games this season so uh this past season overall last season eddie and ketia played 20 games in terms of footballing um 10 games has been within the senior team setup uh and he managed to score two goals during that time so 10 and 2 so let's say for instance he played uh, 40 games um, that means he'd probably score about eight goals uh, for Arsenal which is about that Danny Welbeck type standard which is what I would expect from a player his age a player that hasn't really been within the senior setup ideally and I've talked about this before in many videos strikers have to be scoring 10 goals so even though I've looked at the stats and it's a kind of a 10 on 2 ratio in terms of first team chances we need Eddie Nketiah to be doing better uh, for the Arsenal first team. As you all know, Eddie Nketiah is no secret from goals. Uh, my opinion on Eddie Nketiah is that he is a natural goal scorer for the under 20, 23s and even on the 18s. For the last several years, he's been scoring goals at a phenomenal rate. Um, I think that at his peak, if he gets to scoring goals for the senior team, like what he does um, for the uh, academy, we're looking at a player that has uh, the potential threshold to be scoring between 20 and 25 goals a season, which I, I think is his absolute peak in, in terms of his capability. If you have been a long-serving Arsenal fan, you will remember Eddie and Ketia's debut for uh, for the Arsenal and. Uh, seeing when he scored that brace back in 2017 uh, against Norwich uh, was amazing. Um, I mean, this is a guy that came on, I believe it was the 89th minute, um, managed to get onto a flick on from Giroud uh, and scored his first goal. And then the second one was a set piece goal in which he headed the ball in, which, I, you know, you have to be surprised in that the fact he, he was 5'9 to be able to get up that high and put a lot of his players to shame. And I expect Eddie Nketiah to get a big chance this season to be able to showcase his talents. I think that the only thing that will stop Eddie Nketiah from getting his talents this season is if the board really decides that they want him to get a lot more games in terms of being in the starting 11. And that's the only reason why you would send Eddie Nketiah out. Let's say, for instance, send him out on loan to a European side because you know Eddie Nketiah is going to go out there and play 30 to 40 games, 90 minutes football for the season. And if that is something that we can offer him, then maybe a loan would be suited to be better. But as of right now that I'm making this video, there is no one behind really Lacazette and Aubameyang who we have another striker that could go out there and score goals. Danny Welbeck is gone and we really have no one else. So Eddie Nketiah for me is my next player uh, to be able to be in the whole Arsenal setup. Can come up off the bench, do bits like what he did in the last season at Burnley. Came on and, and scored a brilliant goal for the Arsenal first team. Third player on the list has to be Joseph George Willock. 
now also known as Joe Willock. Uh, he's a player that actually got his debut under Arsene Wenger. And you know what? When I first saw Joe Willock, I thought, you know what? He's not ready. Um, and to be honest, I wasn't even sure if Joe Willock was ever going to be ready for Arsenal. But this season, Joe Willock has been one to surprise me exponentially. Like, we first saw Joe Willock play for the Arsenal this season in the Europa League, uh, scored a brilliant goal. Then in the League Cup, he scores another goal uh, as well. Um, and an absolutely brilliant player uh, that I really do think that he will develop into. This past season, he has played the total sum of 20 games, scoring 12 goals. And for a central midfield player, which is his primary position, is fantastic. I mean, and when we're talking about an Aaron Ramsey replacement, guys, like, give this guy a shout. Joe Willock being a potential Aaron Ramsey replacement, uh, it's, it speaks volumes. Unai Emery at the end of our last season before the Europa League final came out and said that Arsenal probably wouldn't be looking to buy an Aaron Ramsey replacement, that they would potentially be looking at the academy for that. And I think that he was talking about Joe Willock. Then in the Europa League final, terrible loss. But one thing that a lot of people weren't really talking about was the fact that Joe Willock came up off the bench and looked like he was trying to change things. Yes, he missed some chances. Yes, maybe there were some shots that he had that he should have gotten on target, but it was the fact that he made an effort, that he was trying to do things. He was trying to change and influence the game, which is exactly what you want from these young players. And for him, 20 years old now, now is his time to be able to come into that role and take the initiative because the role is there for somebody to really grab. Joe Willock can also again play as an attacking midfield player and as a right midfield player. Now I know right now we don't really play with kind of right-sided midfield players, uh, but I do think that there will be a formation change for Arsenal and I think we're going to be playing a variation of 4-2-3-1. 4-3-3 three, three, uh, as well as a 4-4-2 and, and all the variations around that including the diamond including the flat um, back uh, flat four midfield and back four I think that there is an opportunity there for these young players and Joe there's an opportunity for him to play not just in central midfield but even forward forward in an attacking midfield role he's shown that he has the capabilities to score goals even at the last season in Burnley started and he he looked pretty good you could just tell that he was missing that kind of end product but i think a lot of that comes down to confidence and i think that confidence will only build and grow and get better as you see him more within that kind of first team setup but so joe willock being my third player that i see within the arsenal first team pitcher and finally my last player that i actually think would be within the whole Arsenal first team setup as a guaranteed setup is Christian Bielik. I think that Christian Bielik has had a fantastic loan at Charlton. You talk to all the other Charlton fans and they cannot stop talking about Christian Bielik. He has showed leadership capabilities within that team uh, this past season. He's helped them get promotion to the championship and he's been one of their best players uh, within that Charlton side. This past season, he's primarily played as a defensive midfield player, uh, but has played a handful of games in that centre-back role. And you know what, Lee Boyer, who is the manager at Charlton Football Club, talked about that, that he was actually surprised Arsenal didn't look to bring him back into the first team setup because right now Arsenal need defenders. So it's really good to have an Arsenal legend like Lee Boyer talk about Christian Bielik in that kind of light and to see him as a potential player that could be within that first team. Now Christian Bielik, out of all of the players that I've talked about so far, uh, he's played the most games. He's played 35 games so far, scored five goals um, and also managed to get two assists. A lot of that was primarily due to the fact that he was playing in defensive midfield a lot of the times and he was looking to break up play 
win the ball and also help drive forward to be able to create chances for a lot of the attacking players there. So Christian Bielik showing that he can be a useful player for, for Arsenal. Now, where would he actually play within the first team? I personally think he would rather play within as a defender rather than as a defensive midfield player. But the fact that we can play him in both roles, I think gives him an added advantage uh, for Arsenal. It's no secret that Arsenal need another defensive midfield player. It cannot just be the Lucas Torreira show in that midfield role. And even though I think that Lucas Torreira has been fantastic at Arsenal, the one thing that Lucas Torreira is missing is something that he can never get because you can't just get height. Uh, which is exactly what Christian Bielik can offer. Christian Bielik is six foot two and is able to win the ball in the air more so than a guy like Lucas Torreira, who's at five foot five. And even though he gets around the pitch very, very well, he's not gonna be able to win the ball like how Christian Bielik can and give us that necessary height and strength that's needed. And that's something that I feel Bielik could do within that midfield. And what he can also do uh, in the defense as well. So again, another kind of versatile player uh, that we can add to that Arsenal squad. Now, when I look at Christian Bielik's capabilities at center back, I see it as like this. We, we need to be able to be planned for the future. So currently right now, we're in talks with the likes of William Saliba, which I do think that we will get at least one center back we'll buy. So whether that being William Saliba or Anderson from Sam Dora, there's still Rob Holden, there would be Christian Bielik, and there would be Socrates. You still have the likes of Koscielny, Mavropanos, and Mustafi there. I do think that Mavropanos will get sent out alone. He needs games, uh, even though he's in our camp in our academy he does need games i think that koscielny would probably be sold um, and mustafi will probably be sold as well if buyers come in for them but christian bielik i do see within the arsenal setup he's got one year left on his contract and you gotta play him you gotta play him you got another player like reese nelson who is playing at you know, the, the youth tournament, the England under 21s, he's at the Poland uh, under 21s and he's an international. Why are we not using these guys? So Christian Bielik, another player who has to, for me, be within that first team setup for Arsenal. And finally, now I know this seems like a long video and I won't go into these players too much just because I feel that there are also other academy players that could also get chances, but it is primarily dependent on whether players are sold and whether players come in at Arsenal Football Club. Uh, and the likes of, and I have a list of them here. First of all, Zek Medley, Zechariah Medley. He's a young center back at the, in the Arsenal Academy. Gets a lot of plaudits from a lot of people that go to the Arsenal under 23 games, as well as for everybody at Arsenal Football Club. He's a guy that can play primarily at center back, but can also play at left back. He played, I believe it was a couple games this season within the Europa League, but we need a kind of defensive left back and he could be that option to be able to do that. Right now, we've got Nacho Monreal playing at left back and it's primarily the reason why I don't really see him getting much of a chance unless Nacho is sold or unless Nacho decides he's not gonna renew his contract at the end of the season. So depending on how everything goes with Nacho, as well as Kalazanac, um, will be depending on whether Zach Medley will get his chance in the Arsenal first team. Emile Smith Rowe. Now, this past season, I know everybody was expecting me to include him into that list, but Emile Smith Rowe, this past season, went on loan for half a season at Leipzig, went there injured, uh, unfortunately, um, and didn't get to really play a lot of games. And for me, I still feel like he needs to go out on loan. Um, he's a guy that has lots of talent and I think the, his future is at Arsenal But unless we have lots of players that go I I feel that he is one that's going to be set out to be loaned out to the club for that first team football So that in a year or two years time he can be able to start getting those first team opportunities So Emil Smith Rowe for me to get set out on loan unless something dr drastic happens Xavier Amici now, this is a guy who, again, has been bigged up 
by the Arsenal faithful and everyone around Arsenal Football Club. Um, he's a guy with bucket loads of talent. I mean, just Google him, go watch videos on Xavier Amici uh, on, here on YouTube. Uh, but I do feel that he's probably gonna be sent out on loan. Um, primarily, he plays as a winger. Right and left, he can play on. Primarily, the reason why I think Xavier Amicia is going to be sent out on loan is because we already have enough wingers in the positions, or we're already planning on having enough wingers on those positions that we're looking to get. So, we've got the likes of Awobi there on the left, we got potentially Ryan Fraser out there on the right, along with uh, Reese Nelson, who I also feel will be playing out there on the right as well. So I think that there are lots of positions that are already kind of covered, but he does need game time. And I feel that going out on loan would be best for him. The only thing that I feel that might keep him at Arsenal to be able to get more first team opportunities is the fact that he has one year left on his contract. And a lot of clubs around Europe are looking at him, the likes of Bayern Munich, PSG, Real Madrid and Barcelona. So that could be a reason why Arsenal be, might keep him. But I feel that he needs to get sent out on loan as well. And finally, Jordi Osse Tutu. Um, he's a right back currently at Arsenal. Last season we got an injury to Hector Bellerin and he probably had the opportunity to go and play for Arsenal in the first team, but unfortunately the club looked to play Maitland-Niles in that position. And you have to wonder why he didn't get an opportunity to play for Arsenal uh, in the first team when we had an injury in the position that he is a natural at. And I feel primarily because of that is a lack, is a lack of trust. Uh, and even though I think that Freddie Lundberg being in this position means that he will get chances, the fact of the matter is that I feel that, he, again, he needs games. And you got the likes of Celtic looking at him right at the moment. This is actually a great opportunity for him to go out on loan um, to the club. I feel that with Arsenal looking to bring in the likes of like a Thomas Mounier in the side, this could be a good opportunity for him to go on loan, get some games and see what happens next season or over the next couple of seasons there with Arsenal. But guys, thank you once again for watching this video. I hope you liked the video. Please comment on what you thought of the video. Did you disagree with me? Did you agree? Leave your comments below. If you haven't done so already, please share this video, subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Oh, <laughs>